Hello, and welcome back to the Awe Podcast. All right, welcome back, listeners. Um, we're here to talk about acceptance, which means an ability to holistically observe. Um, and, and acceptance, I like to think of, it's the place where the observing self can begin. And it's when we begin to notice those things that we can change versus hyper-focusing on those things we can't change, right? Mm -hmm. It's this idea that um, without acceptance, we can be blinded by some sort of the wrong piece of the problem sometimes. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. Pretty strong opening there, Josh. Yeah, and (laughs) acceptance. So I'm going to give a pretty generic definition of acceptance then. Um, You did a great job defining it, but it's the action or process of receiving something, right? So that can be an idea, a person, right? Right. Pretty broad there. Yeah, Yeah, but accepting and and receiving that. Right, right, right. And that's probably like the pointed definition. You know, mine's more of this verb almost in a sense that it opens something. Right. Yes. Um, and and your definition is more about letting it in, mm-hmm. in a sense, right? Yeah. 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 Well, letting it in is pretty good too. Right. So let's talk about acceptance and the observing self. The observing self is is when we can sort of take a third person view of our lives and report back what we're seeing. Right. It would be as if we asked someone else to report the news on our lives. Right. And then being able to listen to it without those defenses and things like that that come in, Mm -hmm. come in from that critical feedback. Right. So this makes me think of um, uh, an excerpt from the AA Big Book. And on in in my work with addiction, we often refer to page 417 in the AA Big Book. And and there it says, I mean, simply, and there's a, there's a lot more. I challenge you to go read it if, if you're the listener and can have access to the big book. But um, it says, and acceptance was the answer to all my problems today, right? And then it goes on to talk and bring to life with Shakespeare, actually, mm. um, the observing self. And Shakespeare said, all the world's a stage. And we are merely, you know, actors and actresses in this you know, world size play, right? Aren't Which we? means that there's lots of observing that goes on, right? <laughs> All day long, yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And when we think about observing something like that, the observing self notices and describes. And if we bring detail into this idea of observing and describing, that's where we're, we're looking at every piece of the perspective around whatever Mm -hmm. the problem is. We're looking at how those perspectives are constructed. We're looking at the barriers that those perspectives pose. We're looking at um, really our resistance to those perspectives and then fully examining them without jumping into that defensive, protective piece of ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. Which is hard to do. It's so hard. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Defensive. I love exactly what you're saying. I am in awe, no pun intended, but a little, (laughs) of what you're talking about in terms of observing and how it does offer that vantage point, if you will, right, to see all of that. Right. Yeah, yeah. To take away those defenses, in a sense. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. And and to really examine, are these defenses something that I need to have or not? Yes. Right? Because some of them will be validated in this observing self perspective. Absolutely. Um, but that's where I think acceptance just really opens that door, takes our blinders off. It, it keeps us from being blind mm-hmm. and says, let's look at all the pieces of this problem that I'm facing Mm-hmm. and therefore turn to the answer, right? Because also part of that big book excerpt is that as you look at the problem, the problem grows. As you look at the answer, the answer grows, right? Right. So how do we do that? Well, we accept what's in front of us so we can have a clearer vision. Yeah. 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 That's excellent. Um, and so your thought process, where you're going here, your guidance, your leadership with this topic of acceptance, right? Um, Talking about the acceptance of difference. Um, Oh, yes, yes. And for me, that brings me to a place, um, the topic of, if you will, of race. And 
you know, I bring this up um, because for me personally, there's been a lot of discussion around race recently and in general, right, um, um, with those that I interact with and then even within my own life. Um, yeah. So this has been on my spirit, right? And I've got to talk about it. We've got to talk about it, you and I, and then those, the listeners too, right? We've got to talk about race. And, you know, we live in a society where race, and I also want to know um, ability, gender, money, social class, all those things, right? They shape many, if not all, areas of our lives. Absolutely, Um, yeah. Yeah. But today, we're going to address race, right? Um, Yes, yes. (laughs) Yes. And a disclaimer here is that we are not claiming to be race experts okay oh for sure not. um no, want to throw that no. out there but yeah right. we're going to talk about race today and um race relates to who we are authentically it is um, yeah it relates to our well-being mm-hmm. and how we can or how do we use our race our difference our uniqueness right if you will to empower ourselves and to empower others right and so those are the pillars of awe and right. so it is yeah so race relates and, you know, race is a very, you know, defining, visible characteristic of many of us. And it's important for us when we look at accepting our race as ourselves. Mm-hmm. How many places do we not be our authentic selves because of the color of our skin? Yes, so many. And that's right. why... I really feel like we should talk about it because like I said, it's been, you know, it's come up a lot recently and Mm -hmm. you know, I'm a biracial female. Right. And so acceptance of that part, right. Like you said, because that's the first thing people see. If you see me from across the room, right. You notice that I look different in terms of my skin color. Right. And so, you know, um, this translates to non-white, which you and I, Josh, are both learning that there's a new, more appropriate term out there. Um, right, right. Which we're going to hopefully start using the term racialized minority, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Yep. But that's yep. the first thing, yeah, that somebody might notice about me from across the room. They've never met me before. Right. Um, and so along with that, for me, this is the acceptance that my reality is different, right? Right. And that's due to my racial identity. Um, yeah. Yep. You know, acceptance that my life experiences are and probably always will be different due to that, due to For my sure. race. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so also coupled with that, I must accept that this is true for others whom identify differently along the race spectrum, if you will. Right. Right. Um, it's not just me, but anybody. Right. Who who looks different um, mm-hmm. and accepting that. Right. Um, and I also accept that race makes others uncomfortable. And it, it, um, is. it can be a very uncomfortable topic yeah, to talk about, right? It is. Um, <clears throat> it tends to put a us versus them sort absolutely. of mindset in place. And and that's where like acceptance means I can see that you're different from me, but it doesn't mean that we're all entirely different humans. Right. 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 Although, you know, you talked about race can give us certain opportunities, right? You know, I'm a white European male. I'm, you know, as white as white can be. And I know that it affords me certain privileges in certain areas. Does that negate that I had had to work hard in school? No, no. It's just saying that maybe I had the the equity, equitableness of the system advantaged me in some areas more than others, right? Right. Um, and yeah, it could be related to the color of our skin. And sometimes that's hard for me to even say out loud, right? It is. And that's why I say this is uncomfortable. This was this is something that that just makes people uncomfortable. And and so that's why I thought, you know, we we've got to talk about this. We've got to bring it up. And acceptance right. is a huge part of this because like it you is. said, yeah, it, there's difference. Yeah. And does that mean that we agree with these differences where they come from, why they exist? No. That's not what we're talking about in terms of acceptance. Right. But right. that this is a reality and that like you said, it's it's something that's noticed, right? It's yeah. noticeable, it's something that's immediate. Right. Um, right. And so yeah, you know, um this leads us into acceptance of you know, our authentic selves, right? And Mm -hmm. yeah. so how does the acceptance of my racial identity and its impact on my life, the likelihood that it causes discomfort apply, right, to my acceptance? Right, right. 
How does my racial identity, um, the barriers that it creates, the fears that I have because of it, right? Right. How? How does this relate to acceptance, my authentic self? Um, and the truth is that this is a reality for many others, right? It is, um, yeah, yeah. And again, so that's why, right? That's why we talk about this in terms of acceptance. Right. And, and I think, you know, for me to accept that, you know, maybe I have been advantaged, right? Or I have been advantaged, not maybe. I have been advantaged because of, you know, where I was born and how I was raised and, and things of that nature. And the color of my skin uh, impacts that as well. And then when I'm in a room with people who have more melanin in their skin or are or, or black or brown, what does that do to that dynamic? What kind of impact do I have on others? And that's a very human question to ask. Mm -hmm. And maybe we got to bring it back to that. What kind of impact do I have on others? Yeah. And it's related to the, the color of my skin. So how can I bring that into my perspective mm -hmm. and bring that into my dialogue and bring that into my collaboration with other, other people, right, yeah. who look different than me? Yeah. And Josh, I applaud you for saying that because, again, that can be, like you said, that's an uncomfortable thing. It can be an uncomfortable thing to say, ex to accept, to realize that, right? Mm -hmm. And for me, on the other side of that, um, I've experienced a lot of uneasy and unnerving feelings um, and thoughts that are directly tied to race right. because of things like privilege and this... <sighs> This idea of systems and oppression and marginalization, stereotypes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I've even been angry. And all of those yucky feelings, right? Um, especially recently. Mm -hmm. And as you alluded to earlier, right, the vision piece and how we see things and that vantage point. And right. because of that anger that I felt, because of those things that are out there, right, it's mm -hmm. clouded my vision in terms of who I am authentically. Right, right. Should I be this person? Yes. And it's made, like you said, interactions with people uncomfortable and maybe mm -hmm. not something that I'm so proud of or things that I second guess. Right. And so for me, again, accepting my reality. Um, and then how do I use that? How do I apply it, right, to right. be authentic in who I am? Um, yeah. yeah. And so that leads me to change. And for me, I think... It's in the way that I approach things, right? So people, relationships, my profession, the use of terminology. Yeah, right. How Everything. we educate. Everything. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yes, the awareness piece. How do I educate others, right? Right. How do we um, share this? How do we get on a podcast and talk right. about this uncomfortable topic? Yeah, right? yeah. Um, and sometimes, you know, I'm going to jump in. Sorry you're fine. here. Nope. Yeah, you're fine. When we have this perspective that I could impact someone else based on the the color of my skin, we can have this sort of defense well up in our, our yes. bellies and say, well, I'm not trying to. And that's mm -hmm. not how it's, I mean, they just maybe have to get over it. Or maybe it's, you know, this or A, B, and C. But at the end of the day, I'm really not trying to, you know. But <clears throat> when we think about the impact of our words and we take race off the table, mm -hmm. right? Most of us are going to recognize when we talk about bullying that the impact of our words is highly important. Mm -hmm. So now let's take that race back up, put it on the table and say, if the color of your skin and the color of my skin cause us to interact in a way that offends each other, it's a problem, right? Because yeah. it's the same thing as bullying. Right. So we need to evaluate the impact of our words. Right. And that's that acceptance piece, because like you said, even for me, right, the person who is identifying biracially, right, um, like you said, I get or I became defensive. There was times when, yes, I felt defensive and how right. that changed that. Um, and then it wasn't for me, it wasn't about um, being authentic and, and empowering for myself or for the other individual or individuals, right? And so that whole acceptance piece about, you know what, this is what it is. This is my reality. Race is a thing, right? right. And, and how I utilize that approach. A thing that I think, you know, again, um, that I realize it, and I wanna speak to this, it is very difficult, this acceptance, it's not easy, right? Because while I talked about people, relationships, my profession, the use of terminology, the way I'm gonna approach things, this means that that is directly tied to people that I love. This is family. These are friends, colleagues, right? right? right. Clients, right? Where 
where there has to be that acceptance that mm-hmm. that is something that is immediately a thing that might be seen, right? That might be right. present in that right. interaction. Um, and so even though, like I said, it's, it has been, it's been difficult. It will continue to be difficult. Um, but it's, it's done exactly what you spoke to for me, Josh. It's cleared up my vision, right? Because again, I can now use that as a piece to educate, right? Right, um, right. And I, there is so much work to be done. Yeah, yeah. Because it's important at the end of the day, too, to recognize that to be, you know, holistically me and is is accepting myself and all the pieces of me. And then when it comes to observing like the problem of racism, right? And if I'm the one being impacted by the racism to accept wholly that this is a thing, right? Mm-hmm. How do I take a person on one end of the spectrum and the other end of the spectrum of, of views on racism and bring them around the table <clears throat> and say, how do we collaboratively move forward? Because it seems to me that it's just the color of our skins that's making us different. Right. And that's not okay if we can't do that, right? right? It means that we need to really do a lot of internal reflection to say, do I care about the impact of my words or the impact of my behavior? And if it's affecting someone in a really negative, discriminatory and oppressive way, is that okay? That's right. the opposite of love in my book. Yeah. And and for me, you know, I, I touched on this a little bit and said that, you know, I have to accept that race, the one of the pieces or um, places that it holds in my life is that it creates fear within some of the things and the ways that I interact, right? And I have to accept that. And so that's exactly like, again, tying into what you're saying, like, how do I, right? How do I bring that into those places? Um, because I don't want to feel defensive. I don't want to feel fearful all of the time. Um, I believe in what I do. I believe in who I am. And so how do I communicate that in this system where it's a thing, where racism, where right. race is a thing? Right. And and that's why I speak to the piece of being, you know, one um, interaction at a time. It, you know, it's the approach that I use. It's the terminology I use, right? Um, and but let it begin with me. And that's really where I've come to in terms of acceptance is, yeah, I get, I've been in a, in a place where I felt defensive or I felt small, um, both maybe, uh, more than that, all those emotions. Right. And, and how do I, how do I get out of that? Because I don't want it to be the crux of everything all the time. And it's, and it's got to be the way that I approach it. It's got to begin with me and how, right. how I approach that. It's kind of like what you're saying kind of reminds me of if I let my defensiveness run the show, I'm going to be acting out of anger a lot of times. I'm going to be causing the same thing in others, Mm -hmm. right? You know, so maybe sometimes looking at the place from which we're acting from and evaluating our behaviors based on that because we're going to you know let's face it if you know it should make you angry right Absolutely. And, and be baffled by the treatment based on simple fact of the melanin in your skin mm-hmm. why does that have to be a factor right? right we can build on defensiveness there Absolutely. but how do we accept open our holistic vision and say how I'm going to how I'm going to going how am I going to move things forward seeing everything in my pathway mm-hmm. rather than this just this one person because yes. it's easy to knock a person out and then to knock the next person out because we're mad at them right yes. yeah <laughs> fairly quickly <laughs> right right what if we have an army of them He's eventually eventually we're going to run out of energy and I think that's where, like, what is my strategy? How do I approach it? And um, not to accept maltreatment. That's not what we're saying. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. But how to eradicate it or lessen it. Right. Yeah. You know, I don't know if we'll be successful ever in eradicating it, but for certain we can lessen it. Yeah. Right. 
And again, like I said, not an expert, but I know for me, there's been just a lot of yucky feelings around it. And, Mm -hmm. and I don't want it to be the forefront of my mind all the time. Right. Right. Um, Right. And so, yeah, it's, it's gotta be that interaction. It's gotta be that approach. Right. And, and how is that empowering to another individual? Right. Mm -hmm. Do I then assist another individual who maybe looks like me or doesn't, or has Mm -hmm. questions about that? Right. Um, and so that's where also helps me in terms of acceptance is because I really, um, I'm in the helping profession, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a social yeah. worker and I really <laughs> like the idea uh, um, behind empowering somebody else or, or um, if my struggles, if you will, can help another individual, right? But I can't do that if I'm coming from the side of, of anger and defensiveness all the time. Right. They're probably right. not going to want to listen to me. No, and so no. <laughs> I've had to take a step back and think about race and think about how it is impacting my life, my children's lives, many, many people's lives. Right. right? And, and yeah, and how I interact, right? Let it start with me. Yeah. 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 And that's where change begins one at a time, right? Changing minds. Um, and a lot of that is done through education and how we educate right paying attention to the group of people we're talking to how do we message it so that they hear us how do we message it that it's compelling enough to want to make a change rather than being able to sit on you know sometimes we can say we can sit on our white privilege and say it's not happening to me so it's not affecting me Mm -hmm. right so therefore maybe it's my pathway of avoiding it you know it doesn't mean that it's not happening it just means that i've chosen um to not do anything and, and that's where the issue lies as well we all need to do something yeah yeah i think so but yeah it begins right like you said we all need to do something so where does it begin and for me it begins with me because if i'm getting mad and i'm caught up in my own personal battle mm-hmm. and how is this individual going to perceive me or then i'm lo- there's something lost there um, right because the truth is i offer many gifts um, beyond <laughs> that first impression that you get of me <laughs> with my bi- my biracial self. And so how do I get past that, right? Even if somebody may stereotype me or, or believe they know who I am, but I get that chance to interact with them and I approach them, right? How, right. what can I do in that situation? And so that really, I had to accept that in my own head. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm almost ashamed to say it, but I'm not because I'm growing through this. Right. Um, and yeah, yeah, powerful. Yeah, yeah. and we've, really been growing together from from two different wildly different perspectives right yeah and just have sat in rooms together having long dialogues yeah poor Josh. questioning <laughs> ourselves no 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 it's been learning and improving for me right because I only make mistakes, but every day, so. <laughs> Me as well. Yep. Really good at that. <laughs> but how fast can I see it and how fast can I learn from it are the important things. Right. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yeah. For sure. So acceptance brings into clear vision our authentic selves. Yeah. And when we have that third person viewpoint of who we are, we are better able to move and navigate some of the barriers that lie in front of us yep. rather than if we're focused on one barrier off in the distance and we miss the one in front of us well it hurts to fall on your face <laughs> yeah <laughs> sometimes badly, we do yeah sometimes it even leaves a mark <laughs> well you're right, you're right you're right break your nose you never know <laughs> can't get back up <laughs> All right. Speaking of failure, let's move to our goals. <laughs> yeah. Nice segue. Nice segue. <laughs> no, it hasn't been. Uh, that's only only a joke. There's been many wins, I think, in, in this. Okay. Um, so I would like to report that this week on my reading goal, uh-huh. I've read. Now, I'm not reading. <laughs> I haven't read the book that I've been talking about, that I took the picture of. Um. But my therapist suggested a book to me, and I have been reading it. I'm more than halfway done with it. And um, um, ironically enough, it, it talks about race. And <laughs> Wonderful. It's, yeah, so I, I've met that goal this week. I am Amazing. reading um, 
and it is part of what I said I want to do in terms of self-improvement, right? The um, formation of my growth mindset and right. it's helping me get a different vantage point, helping me stop focusing on just the one thing. Wow. What a win. Yeah. Mind. Yeah. yeah it's, it's been a powerful read. Um, asserting myself. I think I've been doing that as well. I think that I've, um, I've been doing that in baby steps, like I think I've said before, but I had to speak at an event, a rather large event, and I had to address the crowd, and I second-guessed um, some of the prepared speech that I prepared, and I wondered how it was going to um, impact others and if it was going to upset them or if they would think I was talking to them or yeah. would they personalize that, and I considered changing it. But I it didn't. Was, it was incredible. Thank you, you guys. Josh. It was incredible. Thank it you very was. much. And so I stuck with it. And I feel like that was asserting myself. And I had a pretty assertive outfit on as well. So <laughs> she did. She did. And she owned it. And she was poised. And it was just amazing to watch that growth. And, and what a win. Yes. Two wins that night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. For yeah. sure. So for me, you know, physical well being. Uh, doing well. Mostly I had a couple days where I, I slipped in there as far as um, eating healthily. Okay. Um, but doing a little better um, in that regard, too. Nice. Um, yeah, so it's been great. It's been great. Um, and so exercise, I've discovered that we have a bunch of toys in our basement. And it's a mess all the time. That's where we have our exercise <laughs> equipment, too. So what's been working is I go down there and I walk while um, my three-year-olds and sometimes my seven-year-old, when he's done writing the spelling words, is down there um, playing. And they just have a grand old time. Awesome. You know, they're not on electronics, you know, which is another win, right? <laughs> and I'm walking. And, and it works, you know. And so that's been a great routine. Yeah. Um, been working well. Um, in terms of meditation, we've been getting in and digging into this new software um, and learning about it. So I've been, you know, meditating a little bit more often, which has been great, too. So um, not as much as I'd like to, but I feel like there's a lot of wins right in there. Yeah. Um, you know, some of the challenges, again, lie around the, the time of day and, and, you know, getting some of those routines down and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and change is hard. Like there are times where yeah, I don't want to exercise and I want to go back to old routines and yes. eat un unhealthily and <laughs> deal with my stress in a, in a not so healthy way. So, um, but it's been, yeah, I think there's some pretty good wins there. Yeah. So. And another win for you, I'm going to point it out. Uh -huh. So forgive me, but you're role modeling healthy lifestyle for your children. If they're down there playing and they're enjoying that, right. And they're not on technology. They also see dad on the treadmill. For sure. Yeah. I forgot about that. That's true. Yeah. So yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so um, I think that wraps up today's episode. And again, we we love feedback, so so please give us feedback. And I know that's a scary thing to say out loud, but we like feedback, <laughs> right? We want to make sure we're helping people and um, the work is uh, meaningful to you. So we want to make sure that we're, we're doing that. So um, that's all for today. So join us next week, and we're going to be discussing gratitude. This is Josh. And Lashana. Stay authentic, well, and empowered. Thank you.